purple and it has even got a pink sort of tinge still covering its body now there was another elephant there she's just also moved off very protective over this little one maybe it's uh, the daughter of uh, this big cow and she won't leave its side it was actually quite amazing she was they were standing together huddled up which makes me think that this little elephant is only a couple of days old now the first things first I because I thought it was maybe brand new because the fact that it's still a little bit pink um, first thing I did was I looked if there was any secretions between uh, the cow's back legs but sadly there aren't and that little one isn't particularly wet either so I think it's probably maybe a day or two old oh, no you're still very maybe you're even newer than that maybe you're from very early this morning or last night you see that very very wobbly just about standing on its tippy toes trying to suckle now oh that's amazing it really is amazing it's the first time we've seen it move it's just been standing suckling the fact that it's so wobbly on its legs maybe it was only born yesterday it is very small oh that is amazing it would also explain why this other cow will be so protective and wanting to make sure that that little one is always between the two of them. I am absolutely in love with these animals. I mean, just to see an interaction like this is just to die for. It really is amazing. It doesn't even know how to use its feet yet. No, it's very young, this little elephant. Oh, that is so precious. It's not very often that you get to see an elephant that's, uh, pff, you know, maybe less than 24 hours old. Yeah, I know. The fact that it can't, it can barely walk makes me think. Now, it doesn't take them long to get up and get onto their feet, eventually, com in comparison to us. But, um, oh no, I've just heard the sound of my sunglasses falling to their death. <laughs> at the bottom of the car it's going to be fun trying to find them again anyways now uh, Sinek you're wondering if elephant skin is sensitive to heat and sun it, it most certainly is and it's one of the reasons why they go and have mud baths and they cover themselves is um, to try and keep themselves cool and it's also basically a natural sunblock too um, to cover yourself in mud and it's well it's a three in one I suppose it helps keep you cool protects you from the sun and it also suffocates any parasites uh, that are on the body any ticks or anything like that so it's actually really good mud we should be using it more I reckon maybe I'm gonna start caking myself in mud for the afternoon safari so I don't get attacked by so many midges all the time now Meg stay wondering if little elephants will be covered in mud by their moms or if they'll do it themselves well it depends on how well they can use their trunk but the first time a, a young elephant goes to a watering hole, normally a little bit weary. I find that they put their feet in it, but they won't really be drinking the water. They might try, but um, at, at only a couple of days old, they really won't have any strength to control the water being sucked up into their trunk. So it's more just getting used to the water and experiencing water for the first time. Now, what I have seen little elephants do that haven't been able to throw mud on themselves is to just lay down in it and then, well, wriggle around on their sides and then get up and do the same thing and then roll over to the other side and wriggle around and then they're quite content with covering themselves in mud like that. But you remember they're also walking around in mom's shadow the entire time uh, for the first few months of their life. So... Uh, I've actually watched the elephants out here. It's really interesting, in fact, how they will all follow mom and, and then sort of stick behind her, but on the side that's forming or casting the shadow where the shade is falling. And they'll just use her as an umbrella, basically, which uh, I thought was very sweet. Um, we are very lucky to have seen that. Wow, we've been very spoiled the last couple of days. It's been really, really amazing. Isn't that just incredible? I mean, I wish I knew exactly how old that little elephant is, but I mean, it's very difficult to tell, but the fact that it's, I can't get over it, that it's still wobbly on its feet. Janie would be in absolute awe right now. I know that she enjoys special sightings like this. Now, Eduardo, you're wondering, how did that elephant lose a tusk? I, I don't think that it lost it. I think it was just born like that. From what I can see, it's actually not uncommon at all to see elephants with no tusk or one tusk. 
um, sort of a genetic mutation that I suppose uh, happens. Um, maybe she has broken it off at the folds of the skin, but I couldn't see anything protruding. It's also very difficult to see something like that. So, so, and that could have just been defending her youngsters from a bull trying to push a big bull away because he's getting a bit too frisky. But um, if you go down to where I'm from, the southeast coast of South Africa, it's actually not uncommon at all to see elephants with no tusks whatsoever. Not so bad. Feel sorry for them in the Sabi sand, though, if they don't have any tusks because they use them to help dig for water, strip bark off of trees. You know, here they're feeding mainly on grass. I think I think the question was Richard, and it was... Um, sorry, I just had a moment there where I heard it and it went in one ear and out the other. If you find a tusk on the ground, what do you do with it, is the question from Richard. Um, well, it depends on the area, I suppose. I actually don't know what the protocol would be uh, to whether they'd leave it or whether they would take it and put it in storage. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of pieces of ivory that you find every now and then that have been chipped off from, from tusks from bulls fighting, and we just leave them out in the bush where, well, they theoretically, they should be safe out there but of course we know that people will pick them up and, and try and sell um, bits and pieces so sometimes they'll collect it uh, if it's a poached animal so if an animal that's been um, illegally taken down and uh, then the authorities will confiscate the the ivory oh shame it's so thirsty it's been a very hot day today as well so it's probably a little bit on the exhausted side but we're going to let this little one suckle through and into the night and we're going to go and search for the ingamas